At Kinky Medical University Hospital's rooftop, a talented 17-year-old artist named Akito Hayasaka stands there staring into the empty sky and then at his phone. He turns to leave but his attention gets drawn to a girl sitting at the other side. He walks over to her and admires her painting, especially the pencil which very few artists like Van Gogh specialize in. He starts a conversation about her painting, and the girl, whose name is Haruna Sakurai, reveals that she's making a painting of heaven where she will be going soon. Quite frightening how she's making it sound so casual. He thinks she must be joking, but she further reveals that she was born diagnosed with a sporadic condition. She has known for a while now that she will not live a long life, so she has made peace with herself. She's hopeful and expectant to see what heaven looks like when she passes in a few months from now. The following day, Akito's sister Natsumi calls him to come for breakfast at the dining table. He comes out fully dressed for school and joins their parents for breakfast before leaving for school. During his class, he broods over his sister's words earlier when she had said he's a genius at drawing the short straw. He thinks she's right as he recalls the day the art teacher hands him a poster for the Nika art exhibition during the art class and asks him to apply for it. He looks through it and nods in agreement with a smile on his face. The exhibition is his most imminent and important goal, as he believes art would open doors to his future. Unfortunately, after a bike accident, he gets diagnosed with a tumor in his heart, and the doctor estimates that he only has a year to live, depending on how the malignant tumor spreads. Akito comes back to reality, as all the while he is drawing Haruna while lost in thoughts. It took him time to wrap his head around the news, but he wonders how Haruna could be so excited. After school, he stops by the hospital hoping to see her again, and fortunately, he comes face to face with her in the elevator. That's how the story begins about the boy who is afraid to pass away, and how he meets the girl who is looking forward to it. He follows Haruna to her room, and they realize they are of the same age. It's also quite interesting that they are both lovers of art. Haruna reveals that she would have loved to exhibit at the Nika art exhibition, but she has little time left to paint something big. She suggests that he become her surrogate since he aims to go to art school, so they should do art school and the art exhibition together. Akito says nothing about his own illness, but smiles as he watches how bubbly and excited she is. He looks through her sketchbook, and the statues there, and wonders how she can draw so much, despite having never been to a museum like she said. For Haruna, her sketchbook is a world where she's free to paint anything and everything including her problems. She tells him to paint over his problems as well if he wants. They spend the time chatting until a nurse comes to inject her. Akito gets up to take his leave, and requests to come by some other time to see more of her drawings. She agrees as long as he comes with housewarming gifts, like something new to draw. At the close of school the next day, he quickly gets out of class, but he gets intercepted by Ari, his friend who is asking why he is missing art club again. She wonders if the bike accident changed his personality too. Akito excuses himself claiming he's tired, he heads for the bus stop and gets on a bus to the hospital. He stops by a flower shop to get Haruna some flowers. With the help of the florist, he chooses five colorful ones. He enters her hospital room and finds her sleeping, so he decides to check out a few of her paintings on the walls. Haruna wakes up, and he gives her the flowers which she loves. She appreciates the sentiments behind the flowers, because she feels her sickness is like a wonderful magic spell, that chases away anyone who bothers her. She tells him that everyone around her runs when they find out that she's ill, except for one person. She suggests they go have some drinks at the lounge. On their way out, the nurse comes to take her for some medical tests and she's surprised to see that Haruna has a visitor. As Akito takes his leave, the nurse makes a special request to him that he should come visit Haruna again. Later in Akito's room, he broods over the things Haruna said, and he realizes that she doesn't go out to meet people, but she lies in her bed waiting for someone to come visit her. The next day after school, he stops by the art class, and finds a classmate named Takata there. From his conversation with Haruna, he learns that she had attended a junior school, the very same one Takata attended before coming to his school. He asks if Takata might know if Haruna had a close friend back then. Takata shares that she barely attended class because of her illness. However, he might have seen Haruna a few times with Miura, a classmate of theirs. Akito decides to talk Miura into visiting Haruna at the hospital. He makes his request known to her, because he wants Haruna to see a different but familiar face. He reminds her of some activities on Haruna's sketchbook, and she confirms that they had truly shared those moments, but she can't bring herself to go see Haruna, whom she hasn't seen since high school began. Miura turns his request down, because she doesn't feel like they are even friends anymore. After school that day, Akito comes back home to meet his mother, who reveals that Eri had come to check up on him because he has been missing art class. She suggests he talk to Eri, as she will feel a lot better if Eri is looking out for him in school. Akito refuses, and heads for his room. 
He pats his sister's head for being too carefree and mocking him for getting rejected by his friend. The whole family watches him strangely as he makes his way upstairs. A few minutes later, his father comes knocking on his door. He tries to cheer his son up by suggesting they go on a family trip, which Akito has always wanted, but his son feels there's no need to make memories now. He doesn't want to be a burden to his family, after all, he's going to pass soon. His father walks back out of the room feeling quite sad that his son doesn't want to open up. At the hospital, Haruna spends her night drawing the flowers Akito gifted her. She takes a look at them even though they are withered, and a sad look sweeps through her face. The following day, Akito comes to visit again. It's been three weeks, and he has been at it consistently. Haruna gives him a drink from the fridge as a reward, because she didn't think that he'd come this often. She takes a seat on the table and picks up the new bunch of flowers he brings for the week. He sees the longing in her eyes as some set of students excitedly comes to greet their mate, who is in the lounge. He suggests they head back to her room, claiming he doesn't like the chatter. They get back to the room and while discussing, Haruna reveals that she'd like to see her dad so she can apologize to him. It's been five years since she last saw him. He's usually an outdoor person, and he dreams of going camping with her. Unfortunately, she was born into a sick body. Akito listens to her wish to apologize to her father for being an unhealthy daughter, whom he can't actualize his dreams with. Poor child. On his way out, he sees the chief nurse who frequents Haruna's room, so he walks over to her. He requests to have contact with Haruna's family, so he can speak with either her dad or mum. The nurse stares at him sadly, and reveals that she is Haruna's mother. She further confesses how she wanted to jump and hug him when she saw that he came back the other day, but as for Haruna's father, he had passed in an accident. Quite a sad life for the little girl. He is on his bed at home, and replays the conversation between him and Haruna's mother in his head. Years ago, little Haruna was on the way to the beach with her dad for the first time. She doesn't tell her father that she is feeling ill that day, as she knows how much her father loves to go to the beach. While driving, he sees that her daughter is having trouble breathing and gets distracted from driving. Unfortunately, he collides with a heavy-duty vehicle, and that accident takes his life. Haruna blames herself for it, and she couldn't forgive herself for surviving. She looks forward to joining her father soon, and isolates herself from the world. The chief nurse tells him that Haruna started opening up a little ever since he started visiting, and she asks Akito to continue being her daughter's friend, as long as it doesn't interfere with his school. Akito gets off his bed, and decides to look up some cases of primary cardiac sarcomas. He steps out of his room, and finds his parents contemplating if he would have been his usual cheerful self, if they had kept the truth about his condition away from him. He goes back in after listening for a few more minutes. Sometimes, it feels like life is unfair, it's quite sad what thoughts this 17-year-old might be battling with. After school the next day, Akito spots Eri waiting for him at the bus station. He takes a different route, and heads for the flower shop. The lady gives him an extra gerbera, and informs him that depending on the number, the meaning of the gerbera changes. He listens as she reveals that six gerberas mean, I'm crazy about you, and when he gives them to Haruna, she notices that there's one more than before, he pretends like he's unaware, and admits that he was given a free one for being a regular. Haruna loves the new flowers she's getting every week, and wishes she could freeze them in time as they are now. She excitedly shows him her phone which her mom got for her. Haruna takes photos of the flowers, and reveals that she'll upload pictures on social media once she's able to master the camera. They spend some time scrolling through the photos she had taken earlier, and Haruna catches him staring at her. Akito quickly excuses himself to go put the flowers in the vase and they soon start talking about their life, especially their crushes, opposite gender, etc. Haruna confesses that she's envious of Akito who has a future and can love, unlike her, because for her, a romantic relationship will be over before it even starts. Seems like Akito is not ready to reveal the truth to her just yet. He casually tells her that he doesn't have a future, but she shuts him up and makes a wish that she'll get to watch him from heaven. She wants to see who he'll marry and the kind of old man he will become. Akito stays silent as he has decided not to tell her that he is also ill. For him, he wants to use the time he has left to make her happy, and he'll make sure of it. Subsequently, they spend time chatting on the phone when they are away from each other, and Akito earnestly looks forward to being with her. He has no spare time to even hang out with his friends anymore, but when he's with Haruna, he tells her about his brainy friend, Eri and Shota, the ace of the soccer team. 
A new week comes, and as usual, he gets her fresh gerberas from the florist. He asks Haruna what she would like to do during the summer, and Haruna teases him saying she will not have a summer holiday because of her sickness. He quickly apologizes and she chuckles at this. She reveals that she usually watches the fireworks from her window, and at first it was scary, but now, she's used to watching it alone. Haruna assures her that he'll watch this year's show with her. Akito informs her that he needs to get going. His friends have made sure he can't escape seeing a movie with them today, so he needs to leave already. Akito meets with Eri and Shota at the cinema, where they'll be seeing the movie. They see Miura and Shota teases him with a rumor of how he asked Miura out. He stares at Miura at the spot where she's attending to customers because she works in the cinema house. On their way to the movie theater, Akito slumps and collapses. Thankfully, people are around so they rush him to a hospital. A week later, he opens his eyes to find his family around him. His mother informs him that he had an irregular heartbeat which led to his collapse. So, he was operated on, and a machine was installed in his heart. Akito can't believe he will have to remain in rehabilitation for the rest of the summer, so he asks what the date is. It turns out it's already August 20th, the day when the fireworks are to happen. And now, he may not be able to keep his promise to Haruna. Later that night, he scrolls through his phone and reads the messages Haruna left for him. The fireworks soon start, and a call from her comes in. He picks up and apologizes for not keeping his promise. Haruna brushes it aside, and she tells him not to bother about it. If Eri was the reason he couldn't be by her side, a trace of jealousy can be heard in her voice as she makes light of the issue, and Akito sheds tears as he is unable to explain his condition to her. They stay on the line watching the fireworks from their different locations, and Akito suggests that they live longer to watch the fireworks next year. Haruna chuckles because her six months are almost over. He tries to keep her hope alive with some other events that they can see together, but it only makes them more sad, as tears roll down their cheeks. The following day, Eri and Shota come to visit. They are devastated to learn about his condition, which he has been keeping from them. He apologizes and explains why he had to. Later they take him on a stroll around the hospital in a wheelchair when the chief nurse sees him and calls out to him. Akito and her go to the rooftop to talk, and he pleads with her not to tell Haruna anything, as she gave him a reason to live when he was full of fear, after learning about his condition. He apologizes for being selfish and clinging on to her daughter, but he wants them to live the remaining days of their lives as ordinary 17-year-olds. The chief nurse understands because being her daughter's nurse has been her way of running too. She has also been clinging so, she very well understands his plight. But for her, it's time to face her fears now, so that Haruna can enjoy her time here. Akito gets discharged, and he decides to go meet Miura, who is just closing from work. She's stepping out with her friends when Akito suddenly comes and drags her with him, insisting that she must come see Haruna. She forcefully frees her hand, and he reveals to her that Haruna has barely three months left, and Miura goes silent after hearing this. Minutes later, they both walk into Haruna's room, and Miura embraces her, apologizing for not coming to see her soon, and for all the awful things she said to her. The both of them remain in each other's arms weeping. Circumstances make us realize how important some friendships are. It's good that Haruna gets to have her friend back, even though she has little time left. On the ride home, Miura shares how she and Haruna became friends in second grade. They became best friends until after they graduated from junior high. Haruna was in the hospital and out of love for her friend, Miura had made her a handwritten diploma, but it did not sit well with Haruna. She severed their friendship, and asked Miura never to visit her again. Miura angrily said some mean things to her, and that was the last time they saw each other. Akito makes an excuse for Haruna's behavior, and it makes sense to Miura, it might just be that she wanted to set Miura free, so she doesn't become a burden to her. Later that evening, Akito's dad walks into his room, and hands him a flyer for an advanced medical procedure, that will help prolong his life. He thinks it's worth a try as his doctor has agreed to introduce them to a good specialist. He informs his son that if the procedure is successful, he can be in the Nika art exhibition. Akito thinks about it and reveals that he can't do it. It will take him three months, and Haruna has only that amount of time to live, and he has to be by her side. His father's countenance sinks as the ray of hope in him suddenly dims. He apologizes to his son for pushing him. He feels a little selfish that he's doing it for himself instead of Akito. Quite disheartening, as no parent would want to be alive and watch their child count down to their demise day. Akito comes to visit Haruna the next day, and just like it's been happening for days, Miura is right there. They both get into a cheesy argument and Haruna can't help but admire them. She suggests they will make a pretty good couple, but the duo rejects it. After the visitation, Miura gives Akito two tickets to her class's hip-hop Snow White show. 
She wants him to take Haruna to the school festival and give her a taste of being 17. Miura shares an incident when they were in elementary school and how Haruna collapsed before she even got the chance to perform as Snow White. Akito sees that her reason is genuine and he promises to take Haruna to the festival. A few days before the festival, Haruna undergoes several tests and treatments to ensure her safety when she's off the hospital. The festival day arrives and Akito wheels her into the school premises. He ensures to take her around, and she enjoys every bit of the activities at the festival. Miura comes to embrace Haruna and thanks her for making it to the play. On their way back to the hospital, Haruna thanks Akito for making her enjoy a dream she never imagined would come true. He suggests they go see all the places she painted in her sketchbook, but her face darkens as there might never be a next time. Akito gets an idea and quickly gets them off the moving vehicle. He takes her to the beach to see the sunset on his back as she is too weak to walk and the wheelchair can't go any further. Haruna thanks him and requests that he kiss her and bring her back to life if she passes. Her day is drawing closer, and she wants to experience love too, even if it's for a brief moment. The atmosphere becomes tense and sad as Akito tears up because he can't change things to work in their favor. He intends to tell her the truth he's been hiding from her, but she asks him not to if it'll be a sad one as she only wants to hear happy thoughts at the moment. As the days pass, Haruna's health is drastically deteriorating and Akito has decided to make her remaining moments something to cherish, just like her mother requested. He comes visiting, and Haruna requests that he draw her. She thinks it's unfair that he only sees her painting, and she doesn't get to see his. Mira continues stopping by the hospital to check on her friend. On one occasion she gives Haruna a makeover. On her way out, Haruna's mother sees her, and the chief nurse is lost for words. A feeling of joy and surprise overwhelms her, and she's glad that her daughter gets to have close friends around her before the end of her last days. Akito's painting of Haruna continues, and one day, she asks him what made him talk to her the first day they met. He confesses how he was going through a dark phase until he saw her, and she became like an angel to him. However, she reveals that she is now afraid of perishing, contrary to how he perceives her to be. The day they met was the day she learned that she only had six months to live, and she felt it'd be better if she embraced it sooner. But not anymore. She admits that after spending time with him and Miura, she keeps longing for more. One more day, one more minute, and now she wants to live. Even the strongest ones get weak. The atmosphere becomes really tense and sad as she sobs wishing she could live a little longer. Akito finishes up with his drawing and shows it to her. She compliments how well he draws, then rests her hand on his as the both of them seem to be lost in thoughts and their grief. During dinner time with his family, Akito pleads to have the operation done. His outlook has been affected by Haruna, and he hopes they grant his request. His father agrees to it, and the look of grief and a glimpse of hope displayed on the faces of his parents. He informs them that they were right to inform him about his diagnosis, as it helped him realize what's important. His parents are moved to tears, as he thanks them for everything they've done for him, and the ones they will do in the future. They realize that for the first time since he was diagnosed, he's actually opening up to them. The next day, he comes to visit Haruna with a smile on his face, which suddenly turns into horror as he watches her get wheeled into the ICU. He hangs around and notifies Miura that their friend's condition is worsening. Akito looks at his phone as he waits outside the intensive care unit area. He starts texting her requesting that she wake up already as his tears fall freely. The doctors and nurses try their best to revive her while he breaks down in tears. His heart condition suddenly becomes critical and he falls to the ground crying. A few nurses find him and rush to pick him up while he reflects on the time spent with Haruna. He sees flashes of her in a school uniform and the both of them doing the things they love to do. His eyes close and everywhere becomes very bright for some seconds before it turns pitch black. Thankfully they are able to revive him, but Haruna is gone. Miura and Akito sit somewhere in the hospital and she cries asking why he wasn't there at the last minute when Haruna wakes up calling for him. He keeps mute and stares into nothingness, his eyes looking sore from crying. She walks away and Haruna's mother who has been watching them walks over to sit by him. She wants him to have her daughter's sketchbook. She reveals that Haruna has been drawing as a means to retreat into her own world. But ever since he came into her life, she draws because she wants him to see her painting. Akito receives the sketchbook and breaks down in tears because he wasn't even there for her in her last moments. The chief nurse pats his back as she also lets her tears fall freely. Later he comes back into her room which has now been cleared and looks nothing like it was when she was still alive. He sits on the bed and opens the sketchbook. He finds a letter from Haruna and he sobs as he reads the letter she penned to him. Scrolling through the paintings she made of both of them brings fresh tears to his eyes. 
Akito gets back to school a bit more determined than he was before, and he even attends art class with much energy that his teacher and Takata notice from the way he paints. He undergoes the operation and his friends are with him through every step of recovery and therapy. Akito decides to take on life more cheerfully, he passes his entrance examination and even goes on a family trip with his parents and sister. Months go by and he ends up in the hospital again as his condition relapses. Mira, who is now his friend, stops by the flower shop to get some Gerberas for him. The florist shows her a few pictures of what six Gerberas will look like, and she's taken aback by a particular image. Mira rushes over to the hospital and finds Akito on the rooftop painting what he calls the last artwork of his life, or better yet, the first artwork of the second life Haruna gave him. The tumors have spread all over his body including his spine, Mira wonders if it's that bad. She brings out her phone and shows him the image which he instantly recognizes as the Gerberus he gave Haruna. He smiles realizing that she kept to her word when she said she'll upload them once she masters the camera. Miura scrolls down the page and shows him more images that were uploaded and one that is protected by a password. He reads it and knows it's meant for him. He spends the night trying to unlock the image with all the passwords he can think of until he finally gets it right. It unlocks and reveals the image of the Gerberus he gifted her, and to his surprise, it's titled, The Story of How the Girl with Six Months to Live Met the Boy with One Year to Live. Seems Haruna was somehow aware of his condition after all. He reads her story and finds out that she became aware of his sickness during the period he was rushed to the hospital after slumping at the movie theater. He smiles sadly as he reads how she played along in her little way of rewarding him for doing everything to make her feel encouraged, when he was also not in good health. Akito bursts into tears as he further reads down to the part where she explains that she loves him using the image of three gerberas as her gift to him for being by her side. As each new day begins, Akito's condition worsens, and he's now under intensive care. Miura has made it a habit to stop by the hospital every day. She paints colorful gerberas on his fingernails while he's deeply asleep. Sadly, he passed away after three and a half years from when he was diagnosed. Miura ends up becoming a nail technician, like she has always wanted. Time went by fast since the passing of Akito, and she's able to get the password to Haruna's letter to Akito. She reads it, and tears cloud her eyes when she gets to the part of Akito's reply. Seeing how much he appreciated her makes her feel special in a sad way. The exhibition day arrived and Akito's final painting was to be displayed at the Nika Art Exhibition, and he made sure to include Haruna's name beside his because she inspired the art. The sad ending of a true romance between two faded teenagers who left the world on the same day, in different years.